How's it going everybody? My name is Avery and in today's tutorial I'll be creating this game right here. This is Snake. We're creating it in C with a new SDL3 library. And by the end of this video your game's going to look exactly like this. Before getting started you want to make sure you have the SDL3 library installed on your system. This is the repo. I'll have it in the description below. You want to clone the repo. So you do a git clone and you would paste it right into there. I already have it cloned. I already have it all built. But we'll go ahead and look at it. It's in here. So in here, you want to make a directory called build and then go into that directory. Or I'm using CMake. So you would just build it like this. If you need to specify the location to, that you want it to build to, you would just pass in this flag right here. And that would specify the location. So that way if your IDE needs an exact location for you want the library and the header files to be installed to, that's where you would do it. And then you would just do, we're gonna use make, we're gonna pass in the amount of processors we have, so it builds it faster, and then you do a make install. Of course you don't need sudo depending on where you want it to be installed. And that's everything you need to get SDL3 on your system. That way when you have your your project you can point to it and here is a basic setup that I have that we're going to be following we're going to be using SDL3's main callbacks and the main callbacks are in a replacement of the main function um, so you don't need to call the main function it's going to handle that and it also has these other helpful functions so there's an init function that's called at the beginning there's a quit function called at the end. It'll also handle some of the SDL exits, so you don't have to individually call everything. And then there's an event. The event will always should be running. It's going to be handling things like key presses. And then there's iterate, which is also always going to be running. In that iterate function, we're going to be handling the rendering and the game logic. So the first thing we want to do is create a window and a renderer. We'll be editing that in here, actually. So we have the window created and the render created. We can set the size. Feel free to change this. Um, the size is also going to affect the size of the snake and the food that he's collecting. We also are going to be creating, initializing the app and initializing the window. And we're going to do that in this init function. So it's just going to be like this. So the SDL init, we're going to check if it failed or not. If it failed, we're just going to say it failed and we're going to exit with that app failure. And the window, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create the window. We're going to give it the width and the height. We're not going to pass in any special flags. And then we're going to pass references to the window and the renderer. And then afterwards, we're going to just say to initialize the window in the middle of the screen. Down here, we're going to handle some of the rendering. Let's just make it so the window can be all filled with black. So the renderer draw color, it's a red, green, blue. We're just setting it all to zero, so it'll be black. We're going to clear it, which is going to apply the color everywhere, and then we're going to present it. And in the app event, this is where we're handling the movement of the keyboard to say if it should be going up or down, left or right. We also want to handle some of the logic for closing out the window. So we just have these switch case statements. So we're going to check for the event type. If it happens to be quit, which will handle something like closing out the window up here. If not, if it happens to be a key down, we're going to check for the scan code. If it doesn't escape or if you press Q, um, feel free to remove this. If you don't want to press Q to quit, it'll quit as well. Now if we were to exit out of here, we can go ahead and try to build it. So you do GCC main and we'll pass in the library just like that and there it's been built it comes out as this a out unless it's specified and here is our black window it's black like we told it to the window is the size we wanted and it says snake on the top so let's open this back up and we're going to edit and now let's actually add the snake player so for this we're going to need to handle things like randomizing because we want to place player in a random location. So to do that, 
we're going to add some of these new libraries right in here. Um, time is used for creating a randomness, basically. We're going to set the tile size. Tile size is going to be used for basically defining how big the snake block is, how big the food blocks are. So we'll do tile size 20. Um, feel free to adjust this as well and play around with it. We're also going to set this rectangle, which is going to be used for drawing all the objects. And we're going to create this direction integer, and we're going to find all the different kinds of directions. We're going to add this function right here, random tile. That's just going to be returning an STL point that has a random location based on the size of the window and the tile size. In the events, we're going to add some more case statements for checking about all the keyboard presses. So that's going to be done just like this. We're going to use the WASD and the arrow keys to check, and it's just going to set the direction to whatever you pressed. Now we're going to create the actual snake. So the point, the snake is going to have a pointer to it because we're going to, be able to want to grow it and reset it. So we're going to have the snake, we're going to have the snake size, and we're also going to manage the capacity of the memory space that we're handling. And we're going to create this function right here called add to snake. We're going to do a very similar function for the food as well. In this function, we pass in a point. This is the point that we're going to be attaching to the snake. And we're just going to see if the snake size has reached the size of the memory space. If it has, we're just going to increase the snake size of the capacity. And then we're going to reallocate memory um, based on that capacity. And we're going to free out the snake if there is any sort of problems. And down here, we're attaching the new snake. So this way, every time the snake grows, we just keep adding to it. We're also going to create this function for resetting the game. Resetting the game is going to set the snake size to zero. It's going to add a random tile to the snake. This will be the head of the snake. And we're also going to give it a random direction. In this init, we're going to want to set up a few things. We're going to set the draw size to the tile size. We're going to initialize the randomness by creating a seed. And we're going to initialize the actual game. Now in the iterate, we're going to actually handle drawing the snake and moving around. We're going to create this delay down here so it sleeps a little bit. So that way it's just not moving too fast. So here we're going to check for the snake size. We're just going to make sure that it's greater than zero so we don't actually mess up anything in the memory. We're going to check for the direction. And based on the direction, we're just going to say, OK, the head should move in that direction. We're also going to see, OK, if it went past the boundaries of the screen to just appear on the other side of the screen, we're going to set the draw color for the snake head. And then we're going to set the location for drawing it. And then we're going to draw it. And then down here in our exit, we'll just do a free snake, just like that. Now in here, if we were to build it again, we're going to see the snake has now been added. And you should be able to control him. And he's going to always appear on the other side if you were to go out of bounds. So now let's create it so we can add some food to the game and make it so you can collect some food. So up here, we're going to add a food pointer as well. just like that. And we're also going to create the same thing for this. So this will be food size. Then it'll be food cap, like that. And in here, while exiting, we'll also want to free the food as well. And we'll do that down here in the quit. Just in case there's any sort of error or anything, it makes sure it frees up the memory correctly. We're going to have this function. It's basically be the exact same thing as a snake one, but this one is for handling the food. 
down here, we'll set the food size as well to zero. And we're also going to generate some random food every single time the game starts. Just like that. So it's going to at least generate three, and then it could possibly generate four more, and it's just going to randomize where the food should be. So that way, every time the food's randomized and the player's randomized, we're also going to add down here to make it so we can reset the game if we would like. So you do scan code, and we'll just say Q, or no, we'll do E. And in here, we'll just do reset game. You can do a break like that. And then we need to do the actual logic of collecting the food. And we'll just add that in right here. So we're going to set the draw color for the food. It's going to be green, so red, green, blue. And then we're just going to iterate through the food size, set the rectangle for drawing to that food location, and then just draw it. We're also going to see, okay, if the food was touched by the snake's head, let's just say, let's just create a new location for that food. Now if we compile it again, we can see that the food should be randomly generated. We collect the food and it spawns in a new location. If we are also to press E, everything should reset every single time. So now we just need to make it so the player can grow and that he can die. So on the very top, let's create a boolean for growing the player. Let's do right here, bool grow. And then for resetting the game, we'll also set that down here. Um, grow equals false, just like that. We already have some logic down here for when the snake gets touched by the food. So we'll set grow to true down there. And then down here, basically going to determine if the snake should grow or not. If should grow, we're just going to say add to the snake, and then we're going to pass in the very last location of the snake. Um, and then we're going to use some logic to make it so the snake can actually move from there. We'll set grow to false again, and here's our logic. So we're going to iterate through the snake size. We're going to see, okay, as long as it's not the head, let's see if the head is equal to the snake. If that happens to be the case, the snake's going to die. We're going to reset the game um, just like that. Um, if they're not touching, we're also going to say, okay, the snake part of the body is going to be equal to the next snake part of the body. So that way, through every single loop, that it's able to move just like that. And then down here, we're just going to set the color to a slightly different color of red, and we're going to draw the rest of the body. We're also going to add a check for seeing if they won. To see if the player won, we're just going to see if the snake size is equal to basically the size of the whole entire window. And then we're just going to say they won just like that. Now let's compile it one last time. We should be able to run it. And here's our game. So you can see every time we collect something, he grows a little bit. And we should be able to kill ourselves. There, I reset. And it prints it down to the log that we died. So I hope this video was informative, that you guys were able to follow along. I'll share the code as well in the description, so feel free to check that out. I'll probably be coming out more similar tutorials in the future. I thought maybe this way that I was doing it might make this video go a little bit faster. Um, if you guys prefer that I just type out everything manually, let me know, and I'll do that as well in the future. Thanks again for watching, and see you guys again next time. Bye.